climate. We can divide the seasons in South Asia into three different seasons. First, you have a hot season from March, April to early June. This is a portion of the winter monsoon. Uh, winter monsoon blow from the land to the ocean. So this is a dry season. Not only dry, but also day by day it becomes hot because this is springtime and early summer and uh, the temperature is rising. With the dry condition and the hot condition, that makes the condition very stressful. So if you pay attention to the news, every year during this time, you see a lot of reports about uh, uh, people in South Asia um, country uh, died of a heat uh, problem. So this is very stressful for both the animals and the human. Then we see the rainy season comes the summer monsoon from June to October. The monsoon rain comes with monsoon wind. The monsoon wind will hit the land in two branches. One branch hit the west coast, another branch hit the Bay of Bengal area, hit the, uh, the Ganges Delta region. And uh, what the rain comes, that is life giving rain. Everything comes back to life. People would celebrate and they would dance and sing in the rain. But also, monsoons cause, uh, cause problems. It cause flooding, which uh, destroyed property, destroyed land, even cause lives. The last season is a cool season from October to February and the rain largely stops, so you have a clear weather. In addition, low humidity, and the temperature becomes cool off, and this is also part of the winter monsoon. So when temperature is getting day cooler day by day, so when the air is dry, it should be comfortable outdoor. So this is the best season to travel to South Asia. Now, when we talk about the one branch of a monsoon wind hit the Bay of Bengal area, it blow into the Delta region. Now, this is the mountainous area. So when the monsoon wind blow on the mountain, the wind will be forced, the air masses is forced to rise in elevation. Now, that will cause additional amount of rain to be done on the land, and this is called orographic effect. So in this region, you have a precipitation due to the monsoon wind, but also you have this orographic effect. Two things together cause a huge amount of rain in this region. So this particular place, Chirabangi in India, is on the record to be the wettest place on Earth. The annual precipitation is 463.7 inches. In comparison, St. Louis annual precipitation only 38.75, less than 10% of precipitation for Chirabangi, India. Very wet. On this map, you see the kind of climate in South Asia. Mostly it's tropical and a subtropical climate. In Ganges Valley and the vast area of Central Asia, you have a humid subtropical climate with a dry season. So this place is further away from the source of water. So when the monsoon wind penetrates into this area, it has lost much uh, moisture. So this uh, area has less precipitation. You can see the pattern of a precipitation during the monsoon season is daily, right here. Fair, uh, relatively high amount of precipitation, but after the uh, rainy season, it becomes lower amount of precipitation. Okay. Northwest here, 
a desert or semi-arid condition. And that's exactly why in the Indus Valley area, you need irrigation to develop agriculture. That makes the Indus River extremely important source of irrigation. Central and South Peninsula India is area, largely tropical savanna climate, but you also have some really dry semi-arid condition. Okay. This area is a uh, uh, savanna climate is facing the dry and wet season alternate. And uh, again, part of the reason that this place is relatively dry is that those coast mountain block make the wind from deeply penetrating into the inland because those places have some really dry uh, area. The southwest coast, the Maldives and the Bay of Bengal area is the Ganges Delta. Those places have tropical monsoon climate. During the rainy season, it's extremely wet. Look at those climate graphs. Okay. During the monsoon season, very high precipitation. Tropical, typical tropical monsoon climate. For Sri Lanka, there are two types of climate in general. On the west, the southwest the section of the of the country is on the path of the monsoon wind, so it's a tropical rainforest wet all year long. And the northeast northeastern section is on the leeward side of this mountain, and therefore it's relatively dry. So you have a tropical savanna climate that is in the wet and dry season. Another factor uh, that also uh, is a major uh, contributing uh, factor to the climate of South Asia is cyclone. Cyclone, uh, here uh, we call hurricane in North America. Northern Indian Ocean is a region with some of the world's deadliest uh, cyclone, especially to some coastal uh, regions. On this uh, slide, you see uh, several major cyclones on record in South Asia that have caused huge amount of uh, loss of uh, lives in history from some, sometimes the 18th century all the way to more recent times. So uh, on the coastal region of uh, South uh, Asia, you do see that a hurricane become a uh, major factor that have an impact on the uh, condition there. Major environmental issues in South Asia. One issue is natural hazard. Let's uh, take uh, Bangladesh as an example uh, for analysis. Bangladesh is a low-lying uh, country. Vast areas of the country is located in the uh, Ganges uh, uh, Delta. Normally, if one third of the country is uh, prone to flooding. The flooding could come in different uh, forms. It could uh, due to the monsoon uh, rain, could be due to the uh, hurricane, could also be due to the springtime ice and snow melting. During the worst year of monsoon, uh, during the worst year of flooding that occurred in 1998, two thirds of the country become under water. Uh, in addition, this country also suffered the problem of arsenic contamination of ground water. Bangladesh, together with Maldives, are all low lying countries. So those countries are threatened by the rising uh, water as a result of global warming. Another problem is land degradation. We already talked about the erosion problem that occurred in some river uh, uh, valleys. Another problem that caused land degradation is salinization. The land becomes too salty. Salinization takes place when you develop irrigation agriculture in arid conditions. It's arid and some arid, semi arid conditions. You put a lot of water into the land, and under arid and semi-arid condition, the strong evaporation will bring a lot of uh, minerals 
to the surface, eventually uh, it kills the crop and makes the land degraded. Also, you have a water logging problem. You uh, put a lot of water in land, and some water may stay in some uh, la uh, layers in the soil, in the land, eventually kill the crop. It happens because if you have uh, layers with poor drainage, that will cause uh, water logging. Another problem is desertification, the expansion of desert-like condition. Now, on this map, you can see uh, Pakistan have 25% uh, of land that suffer problem of salinity. This table tells us that 73% of land in South Asia uh, is more or less degraded. And uh, here, you see 41% of land in South Asia is uh, moderately and severely degraded. So that is really a uh, major problem to the region. Deforestation, you know, the uh, uh, countries in South Asia have a long uh, history, uh, long occupants of humans. Therefore, most of the uh, forest in the region has been lost. There are still some you know, forest left, but those remaining forests are also under threat. So those are the places we will see the remaining forests are uh, being threatened. A related uh, uh, issue is the loss of uh, wildlife. Uh, South Asia has uh, many very unique uh, species of uh, animals, and uh, but now uh, people, uh, those uh, animals are also on the threat, people kill them for skins or for other for other uh, body parts. Even sometimes just for uh, for the meat. And this is a, a photograph of fungal uh, tigers, a very unique uh, species of tiger. The fungal tiger live in those areas and uh, also survive survive in this area. Stand up, man. Uh, fungal tigers is very unique uh, species in a sense that uh, they can survive on the salty water, you know, sea water. Uh, but now, again, they are on a threat because of logging and farming, hunting, also invasive uh, species. Now, you can see on this map that within this area, the region suffer from salinity problem. These are the places we we'll see, we see the expansion of the desert, desertification. Now, here is a uh, region we know we talk about uh, flooding um, early on. So those are the uh, problems the region uh, are facing. Also, you have a pollution problem in the region. You have coastal pollution you know, from agriculture, uh, from urban uh, um, areas. A lot of the uh, uh, pollutant were released into the, uh, the ocean water. A lot of pollutants are uh, organic material, and uh, they use up a lot of uh, oxygen, and therefore that will eventually uh, take oxygen away from the sea creatures. And uh, here you see that uh, this area had gone through the Green Revolution, and they use a lot of uh, uh, chemicals and fertilizers uh, in uh, agriculture to increase the land productivity, but result is that uh, you release those uh, chemicals into the water and pollute the water uh, body here. In this uh, river valley, Namada River is a kind of medium-sized river in uh, India. Uh, the government want to build a, a big dam there that would have to force people uh, to relocate and also may cause some ecological problems in the river, in the river basin. So these are all different uh, ecological problems facing the country. In terms of uh, uh, urban pollution of the, of the world, the 10 most polluting cities, uh, none of them are in South Asia. So here's a picture that shows very severe air pollution in New Delhi. In summary, in this uh, lecture, we discussed physical geography of 
South Asia, in terms of landforms, we divide the region into a four major landform regions. Mountains on the north, lowlands in central, peninsula in uh, peninsula India in the south, and southern islands. We also discuss three major rivers of the region, Indus River, the Ganges River, and the Brahmaputra River. And uh, in terms of uh, climate, we have discussed uh, monsoon patterns in the region, and different uh, seasons. Also, in terms of uh, kinds of climate, mostly in South Asia, we see tropical and uh, subtropical climate. In terms of uh, major environmental issues, we discuss natural hazard, land degradation, deforestation, and related loss of biodiversity. And finally, we highlight the problem of pollution in South Asia. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.